So this is part two of uh, dealing with racial trauma. All right. So if you haven't heard part one, I recommend you go back um, wherever you go back to where, wherever you're listening to this and catch part one. It's only about nine minutes. All right. So here I share more strategies to help people deal with. Um, when I say people, I mean racially marginalized religiously marginalized, culturally more marginalized people who are experiencing trauma as a result of the race riots within the UK. So go back and listen to that first one and then now listen to the rest of the episode right now. So um, rest, okay? It's a very simple um, but overlooked strategy. Our minds are racing, we're constantly on our devices, we're constantly responding to life, to what's going on. Our minds are racing. Rest, even if that's active rest, yes, you can take a nap, you can sleep, but you can, as I did recently, paint a door, or you can, you know, draw, get creative, dance, um, mow the lawn, knit, you know, play games with the family, active rest. It's good for the mind. It focuses, when you're doing active, when you're participating in active rest, you're allowing your mind to be free, to indulge, particularly when you're being creative, to indulge in something that is aesthetically beautiful, pleasing, uh, relaxing, therapeutic. You're not ruminating, you're far less likely to be ruminating on all the negativity that's happening elsewhere, okay? So active rest is, is a great thing. Again, I want to recommend another book to you. Um, Trisha Hersey, sorry, Trisha Hersey of the NAP Ministry. She has written the book, um, Rest is Resistance, okay? And in that book, she argues that, you know, um, capitalism really promotes the idea of us being workhorses. And so by resting, that's an act of resistance. You're being quite defiant by allowing yourself to take, take a nap when you want to, by choosing a lifestyle that is contrary to the norm where you're not a, a part of the rat race and so on, okay? Um, so I highly recommend that. And of course, sleep is very important. Where possible, you want to try and get seven to nine hours uh, sleep at all times, um, just because um, there was some research that I'd read about when you don't get enough sleep, you actually be, can become neurotic, as in your, your mind starts to play tricks on you um, and you become a little bit unwell, um, mentally unwell, it's temporarily when you do not get enough sleep. And I can attest to that, <laughs> just being honest, when I have enough sleep, I feel like I cannot cope. All right, so try and get rest, whether it's, of course, active rest, but also sleep is very important. All right, um, I'm going to move on to the next one. <sighs> and this is something I constantly work on because I think as, as humans in this modern day society, we're not taught to connect with our bodies. And so what that means is we're often trying deal with our issues mentally, and just mentally, um, um, psychologically, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, we try and reason our way through the trauma that happens, and that's just not how trauma is processed. There's a book, another book has just come to my mind, um, My Grandmother's Hands by Resma, um, oh, Gosh, I'm going to forget the name. I'm going to put the link. Uh, I had it just here and it's not there. My grandmother's hand. I know the guy's first name is Resmar and I do not want to destroy his second name. So I'm not going to say it without having it in front of me. Beautiful book. Hey, I know you're enjoying the podcast episode, but I just want to quickly come in and say, look, if you're an organisation that needs anti-racism training for your organisation because your staff are lacking in a racial literacy, they don't have the words, they get stuck when talking about racism, they they want to be able to deal with incidents, but they're not sure how to, then check out our Time to Talk About Race online CPD accredited course at strawberrywords.co.uk. Okay, we can train from 10 to 10,000 but get in touch today at admin 
at strawberrywords.co.uk. Now back to the episode. It's all about racial trauma and the majority of the book is spent looking at the ways in which you can overcome that or work your way through it. And he speaks so beautifully about the fact that we experience stress and trauma in our bodies first. Um, again, so many books I could recommend. Um, Mate, Gabor Mate's, uh, oh gosh, oh, all his books, just get all of his books. Gabor Mate, and The, the Body Keeps Score is another one. Um, and P anything by Peter Levine, great, all fantastic books that tell you that we experience stress, stress and trauma in our bodies first. I remember when a friend shared that she'd been in a car accident and when she went to the whole the hospital, her body started shaking uncontrollably. And then when she spoke to a friend about this, um, what they said was, that was your body releasing the stress. And I just thought, whoa, that's really strange. Like I've never heard of that. And so that's when I started to read Peter Levine's work. Peter Levine is into somatic um, therapy, which, which is therapy through the body. And he speaks about the fact that when animals, you know, they've been in some traumatic incident, maybe they've been knocked down by a vehicle or they've had a fight with another animal or whatever, what they do quite instantly is they shake. They're physically shaking. I think that happens to cows as well when, you know, they're being slaughtered. They shake. And what's happening is the trauma is being released from their bodies. And so often what we don't, because we don't allow um, our bodies to feel the, the strain or the, the trauma that we're experiencing, we often hold on to it. That's very dangerous. As someone who's had cancer, I know that's very dangerous. Um, we need to be able to release our trauma. Now, you can do that through talking therapy. Um, uh, but what you want to do first and foremost is to allow your body to feel what it is you're feeling. Because I used to feel anxious a lot and I, after cancer, I was speaking to uh, my psychotherapist at the time and I said, I feel anxious all the time. And what she said was, um, when you feel anxious, it's, um, your body's trying to tell you something, but you're not allowing it. So she goes, when, when you do feel that way, just ask yourself, what am I feeling? And it was a very, it was a very strange idea, concept initially, because I thought, well, well, shouldn't I just know what I'm feeling? But I didn't. So I would, every time I felt anxious, <sighs> I'd breathe. I'd ask myself, what am I feeling? I'm feeling nervous. I'm feeling uncomfortable. And so uh, initially I didn't always have the words because I, was so un I wasn't used to doing that. I didn't have the words. But as time went on, I found more words. And it wasn't just about the words. It was allowing my body to feel what I was feeling. And sometimes it was really painful. Sometimes I cried. Sometimes, you know, I cried for ages. But you see when the cry finished, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. The relief was so, oh, so amazing. So I highly, highly recommend that when you do feel stressed, because you know, you're dealing with a racist incident in work, or again, you might still have the riots on your mind. You might still feel scared. In those moments, sit down and just ask yourself, what am I feeling right now? And allow that feeling to come through your body because the, fe the feeling just wants to come out. And sometimes my body shakes. Like when I'm, I know this might sound strange, but it's what it is. When I'm really stressed, I allow my body to shake. And again, I know that that's the stress being released from my body. So, um, as I said, Peter Levine, if you're really into what, if you're wanting to find out more about this, um, we'd, The Healing Trauma is one of his books. Healing Trauma, Peter Levine. Also, Gab um, Gabor Mate's The Myth of Normal. Um, very brilliant books. Any book by Yanla Van Zant. And that's it. I'm going to leave that there for now because I have gone on. But I really hope that's useful. And I'm going to do more of this. I'm going to do more of speaking to the people who are impacted by being traditionally unrecognised, being traditionally um, excluded, being the on the receiving end of racism and discrimination. 
um, as well as continuing to speak to people who want to be allies, who want to learn more. But we also need that education. And, and I apologise that it's taken me so long to do this in so much depth. Because I've done it before, but not in so much depth. And I, you know, I realised that, you know, we need to help ourselves first, okay? And it also helps me. So thank you so much for listening. Um, make sure you check out the other episode on racial trauma because I think that's really useful. When I shared the blog, a lot of people said, oh, that's what I'm going through. So make sure you listen to that too. Thank you. Bye.